hype is all of this AI hope leading to way too much AI hype? Let's ask our panel. Stephanie Link of Hightower, Joe Terranova of Virtus Investment Partners, and Alex Kanchowitz, big technology founder, all three are CNBC contributors. Alex, you first. Um, what do you make of this latest, the iOS announcement we got today from OpenAI? I think what this does is it puts OpenAI in position to almost supplant the, I, the operating system on iOS. Now, it's long been this pipe dream of these tech companies to say, actually, using apps on a phone is fairly inefficient. What if we put it all in a chatbot that understands who we are, understands what our credit card information is, understands where our preferences are, and if we get people accustomed to using that, you have power over basically all the apps on the store, and you don't need them to go through Apple's iOS. And I think that's sort of where the big dream is for OpenAI when it builds this, this app today, is instead of just being one app on the phone, being the app that eventually goes through everything. All right, Joe. I mean, it sounds potentially transformational in so many different ways as this technology has just taken everything seemingly by storm, but not six, but six months ago at, at the most. Too much hype? Totally justified? How did you answer that? In terms of time and price, it is incredibly early. Think about this. We're only months into this being the thesis in the market. Thank heavens for generative AI. Otherwise, I'm sitting here talking constantly about the Federal Reserve, monetary policy, an earnings recession, and China weakening. It's real. Think about exactly what generative AI is able to do in terms of elevating productivity for companies. It's creating content which is much different than what artificial intelligence was doing, which was creating outcomes. And the companies that are the leading contributors in that effort are all the companies that are growth at a reasonable price. Those oh, are so they're reasonable price. Because they, that, I'm glad you went there. Mm -hmm. Because that remains a debate, okay? That's where you get the, the growth in AI. Whether it's actually at a reasonable price is the central discussion right now. Whether the valuations of and I don't care whether it's Apple or Microsoft. Now, you're going to tell me that NVIDIA is growth at a reasonable price right now? That stock's up another 5% as we're having this conversation. There's a significant premium that's being paid for the price of NVIDIA because it will be the leader when it comes to data center in contributing to this AI movement. That's why it is that's the why leader. doubled this year. It is the leader. So if you want to tell me that at some point you're going to experience a pullback in NVIDIA, how is that any different than the way NVIDIA has traded over the last five to seven years. If you've been an owner of NVIDIA, you understand that you accept extreme volatility. You ride the up, you ride the down, but ultimately <coughs> NVIDIA is going to be integral in the AI story. Yeah, 318's the 52 week, it's at 316. It's been remarkable, Steph, and yet, you know, you're underweight technology. And I think one of the great conversations to have with, with people who are underweight tech, as you look at, at this moment in time as to whether you're rethinking your own investment strategy? Well, I've been adding to tech um, for the last couple of months. And so last year, all year long, I was 10% underweight tech. And now this year, I'm about 4% underweight okay. tech. You're still underweight. But one of my biggest positions is Meta. And that, that kind of, I mean, the stock has been up remarkably so, right? And I've been trimming it. Another one still. that's up 100%, along with NVIDIA, right, year right, to date. Right. But so, so, so Meta is a big position. Broadcom is a big position. Both of those have AI components to them, but it's not just AI. But it's interesting because we talk about total addressable market within AI, and we know it's probably going to be something like a two or three trillion dollar market by 2030, right? Growing at about 40%. We know only 25% of the companies in the U.S. are actually implementing AI. So there's a long runway. And then we, we all, then we focus on, is it just technology that's going to benefit? No. Of course, social is benefiting. If they're going to spend $250 billion between now and 2030, like the metas of the world, the alphabets of the world. But what about robotics? What about in the agriculture industry? That's actually going to be a $9 billion market by 2025, growing at 35% compound annually. When you talk about growth at a reasonable price, I think of John Deere, which I used to own, which I don't anymore, but they're going to benefit substantially, not only from the growth, but also from the margins because it's such a productivity enhancement. And then healthcare, smart healthcare. We don't talk about smart healthcare. Think about something like a J&J &J or United Health. That is actually, those companies are going to benefit substantially. So I think there's a lot of ways to play AI. I don't think it's just technology. Yes, I am underweight tech, but I have actually a lot more exposure elsewhere that is capitalizing on this theme.